So I uh, lost my phone in Beijing and my immediate reaction because I'm living in China is that my phone must have fallen out my pocket at the cafe that I was in and sure enough when I went back to the cafe it was there someone had put it on the table and they were actually waiting for me to come back and they handed it to me when I lost my action camera in the UK my immediate thought was that someone must have stolen it and later I found my action camera it was actually my fault I had misplaced it my bad but it was surprising to me the trainer thought that it was so different one being I lost it the other being that it was stolen I get this way of thinking maybe is because of a uh, a reflection as much on me and my biases as it is on either country but we do develop some of our biases from our experiences and when I'm in the UK I purposely move my iPhone from the back pocket to my front pocket because I don't want it to get stolen in China my phone is always in my back pocket the back pocket of my Levi jeans and I don't worry about the thought of it getting stolen or pickpocketed because that sort of theft doesn't really happen here that much in China certainly not in Beijing now I'm not naive I have heard about that happening in other people uh, here in China but it's not endemic like I know it is in some European cities like London now London is an amazing city and when you walk around London it's like walking around a living museum it's almost like a movie set but it's a risky city if you don't stay alert. I see examples of theft and pickpockets happening in London on social media and it's always shared all the time. And it looks really scary how easy it can be done and how skillful some of these guys, these thieves, actually are. You park a decent quality bike in London and it's likely to be stolen. And that can take seconds. They throw off the chain and away they go with the bike blink and you almost miss it incidentally I came down here to see the lake, the frozen lake usually there's people on this lake maybe not today maybe the ice is still a bit too thin, it's cold but it's not been as cold as what it used to be anyway something else incidentally my Levi's are American and I always buy Levi jeans because I like them and when I buy them I know what I'm getting, the usual size. They're an amazing American product. I bought some last time I was in America. I was in New York, San Francisco, two amazing cities to visit. Like any major cities, they have their challenges and we all know what they are. Um, but I do like visiting America. And my brother, he lives there and is an American citizen, believe it or not. So that gives me cause to stay close to America because I love my brother very much and I love his wider family. But note something here. As I speak positively about America and America product, or American product, I'm not paid by Joe Biden to say this positive stuff about America. Equally, I'm not paid by the Democrat Party, the Republican Party, to say this positive stuff. It's my opinion based on my experiences. So when I mention that London is an amazing city, it's like a museum, like a movie set, I am not paid by the Tory government to say these positive things or paid by that clown, Rishi Sunak. But I know that you know I wasn't paid by them because you do know that would be a stupid thing to think. But if I say something positive about China on a video, then of course, logic, your logic is that I am paid for that. It's funny that, dumb, funny, always makes me laugh, the absurdity of it. It's actually more reflective of the American government to use payment to get people to engage in propaganda. And they've even announced it, there's a big fund there for people that want to talk negative about China. They can be supported financially. Anyway, back to the, the mindset thing. So we all have biases and we get that. 
influenced by different sources, which may be our family upbringing, our personal experiences. But one of the things that you will experience in China that has influenced my positive bias about the, the, you know, the safety thing is the experience of how people are so relaxed, just abandoning their stuff, their belongings when they go and do something. You can be in a cafe, a local Costa, you can quickly see that there is a mindset where people just get up and leave their stuff. They go to the toilet and their stuff is just lying there, laptops, bags, shopping, stuff. And when you see it at first, it is a little bit confusing because in the UK, I used to have a, a job that I travelled a lot. And with that job um, back then, I would never dream of doing something like that. And I often worked in cafes. I would put my belongings down and I would purposely secure my stuff, like putting the leg of the table through the strap of my bag in case someone distracted me so another person, his accomplice, could rob me. I would also sit with my back to the wall, like some sort of mafia boss, and I would do that so I could see what was going on about me, stay alert while I had to work on my laptop um, and, and, and just be be aware that people might do something to steal something from me. It's just a wholly different mindset than what I'm seeing here in China. And when you see it, you do get surprised initially. So another difference in that sort of mindset in the UK and China is when you see people taking uh, a, a photograph or shooting a video. Here, when taking a video or a photograph, often people will jump in or wave or say hello. Um, they're relatively happy. It seems to me to be part of the the, the photograph or the, 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 the video. Uh, maybe it's part of the culture, I think, here. It does put me off my train of thought sometimes. However, in the UK, people... If you were taking a photograph or a video, people can sometimes be right in your face. And they could be challenging you if you are taking a photograph or video and, and almost like arrogant and screaming at you to say you can't do this. And I usually make, when I'm there in the UK, I'm usually making quick photographs or a very short video recording. One good thing that came from the whole escapade with a guy with a piano is that all the people who thought they had some rights of protection about people taking their photograph or video found out that they virtually had none and I thought that was quite revealing I thought it was quite one way to put it funny or should I say eye-opening again a different mindset again with that photography thing and my face is freezing here is that I often see um, guys with their girlfriends or their partners taking photographs Posing away, taking multiple shots and moving to different poses, they they really get into it. And some risky poses and really elaborate clothing choices sometimes. I really see couples get caught up with that whole photo taking. And I'm often wondering if it's initiated by the, the girlfriend who wants fantastic photographs taken, the boyfriend who is practising his photography or... It's just a thing that they do together. But to be honest, it's none of my business what they want to do. They're doing no harm to me. In the UK, the mindset is often, let's take a quick photograph, a quick selfie, or you know, a, a, a quick video, and then let's move on. Maybe a, a stretch, a bit of an extended awkward pose. Maybe call it a photograph and then disband back into that uncomfortable, awkward silence that we sometimes have in the UK. Just a different mindset. Different mindset. Also here in China, I often see men carry their girlfriends' handbags, etc. Big, hulking Chinese men carrying a, a, a colourful wee handbag. That, to be again, it's fine by me. Not sure if it would happen in the West, in the UK, maybe... Definitely don't think it would happen in, in Glasgow. If they did carry it, it would be holding it for a few seconds and then they would be handing it back very, very quickly. Again, a different mindset. I'm saying it's cold and there's a guy here just about to go and swim in this ice water. Doing the whole Wim Hof, I think the guy is. The guy has made this famous. Personally... Not for me. Not today. <laughs> Stop 
So it's very cold here, so I decided to sit and get some sun. Um, and just as I was speaking there, there was a car horn. And that's another thing that comes to mind. Car horns are always honking in the West. It's kind of a noisy place. And sometimes it's like, what's the point of you honking the horn? You're not making any difference. You're not making any change to the traffic jam. Other than just releasing your pressure, maybe in... And annoying other people around you, know, other car drivers. Here in China, certainly in Beijing, honking horns is just not a big thing. The traffic might be backed up, there's a whole lot of traffic jammed tight, but it's relatively silent. Yeah, some people do honk their horns, but it's just not anywhere near the same magnitude as the UK. The road rage in the UK and the US, for that matter, it's just honk, honk, honk again different mindset, a mindset of impatience and one of individualism, whereas here in China, a mindset of community, a different mindset, definitely. Right, after saying all this about mindsets and difference in mindsets and possible cultures, there is a few things that I would like to see both cultures change, the UK and the China. And there's, there's a couple that springs to mind. One, I really would like to see less spitting. In the UK, people spit out their chewing gum. In China, people will just spit in the street. I admit, generally the older generation, but please just stop it. It's just not, it's not pretty. The other thing is when you're in a fast food restaurant, just clean up after yourself. When I was in Tokyo, I loved that, 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 that just efficiency and that cleanliness in Tokyo where people cleaned up after themselves. I liked that. Oh, and the other thing is, when you're walking around staring down at your, your phone, or at, please, at least walk to the side. Don't walk in front of me zigzagging all over the, the road. Walk straight uh, or put your phone away. It's a bit of a challenge to get past you. You're walking about like a, a drunken football fan in Glasgow on a late Saturday afternoon. So please, put your phone away. You're saying that about drunken... Scottish people, drunken Glaswegian football fans. You actually don't see a lot of drunk people here in the streets in China. Although we're coming up to Chinese New Year or we're in Chinese New Year by the time you see this video. So that may be an interesting thing to look out for. But it's something you just don't see here. Again, difference in mindset. Now there is one last thing that I would like to see the UK mindset change about. And this is the idea that we seem to have this belief that we are a mighty power, this idea that we are all rule Britannia and all that flagging or hugging the flag, I should say. Because the truth is, and I hate to burst people's bubble when I say this, but the truth is the UK is a million miles away from the whole rule Britannia. These days, the UK has just been hauled out by the, the various governments and it's been done right in front of our eyes. In truth, the world has moved on. So do yourself a favour. Adjust your thinking. Change your mindset on this one thing. Think more about peace. Less about war. Anyway, this is me, Ian, here in a freezing cold Beijing. Look after yourself. Look after your family. Look after your friends. And look after your community. Yeah, this is me. Cold. Saying to you, peace out. Take care. Catch you in the next video, I think. Might be about Chinese New Year. The Year of the Dragon. Yeah. <laughs>